The Bible is the word of Almighty God. Therefore, it does not need to be defended, only understood. The purpose of this program is to present to you, our viewers, the key to understanding the scriptures. There is within the pages of the Bible itself a God-given design for studying the Bible. All the confusion that exists within Christianity today is the result of two failures. Number one, ignoring God's design for Bible study, and number two, failing to believe what the Bible actually says. We remind you of what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5.18, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall abide forever. We're instructed in Romans 3.4, Let God be true, but every man a liar. We are informed by 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And as well, God tells us how to study his word in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's God's design, rightly dividing the word of truth, not according to your liking, not into verses you want or don't want to obey, but making distinctions where God makes distinctions, obeying that portion of the Bible that is specifically addressed to us today. Now, here is our teacher. Hi, my name is Dave Kastner. I'm glad you're watching today. I'd just like to go over in the next 25 minutes some things that are found in the Holy Scripture, Scripture some very important things. And I would like to encourage you to get out your Bible and pen and some paper and write down the Scripture references that, that we'll be going to because they're good to have so that you can check, check me out, make sure that, that what I'm saying is actually found in the Scriptures right there on the page and that you, you can know that it's actually there and that it's just not something I'm making up. So I just encourage you to get out your Bible, pen, and paper and write it down and make sure of what I'm saying. Make sure it's actually there. The first thing that I'd like to cover is what I've got written here. It's the way to approach God. There is a particular way that's found in the Scriptures that's an acceptable approach to God. And... If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 17, and we'll be looking at verses 10 through 12. Acts 10, excuse me, Acts 17, 10 through 12. It says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Now, you see, Paul and Silas were by night going unto Berea. And verse 11 says that the people in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica. That was the city they just came from. And the reason why, and it, this is important, the reason why that they were more noble than the people in Thessalonica is because they received the word with all readiness of mind. Now I'm going to, we've got quite a few more things to cover I just want you to see that that's a, a way to approach God. Receive his word with a ready mind. Just be ready to, to receive it into your heart that it's true. And look what else they did. It says, it says they searched the scriptures daily. And that's what I did when I first started getting into the Bible. And to be honest with you, it was out of fear. There's no doubt it was out of fear that I was searching the scriptures. I was making sure that what people were teaching me was r there on the page because I did believe that the Bible was the Word of God and that it was the authority for anything that I was to believe. So I wanted to make sure it was all there, so I searched. So that would be a good thing for you to do is search the Scriptures daily to see whether the things that I'm saying is, are so or not. 
Make sure they're there. And verse 12, the result, it says, therefore many of them believed. And, you know, that, I'm looking forward to that being the outcome of this program, that, that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ through what we're going to cover today. Okay, let's look at Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it's impossible, just by this one verse, it's, it's got a lot of information in it, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. As speaking of God, it's, it's impossible to please God without faith. And if you're going to come to God, you must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He'll reward you if you di diligently seek Him. And it's faith that pleases God. So watch, watch carefully and look at these verses and believe the verses. Don't, don't think that I'm just pulling you know, stuff out of the air. I'm just reading the Bible to you and showing you that the Bible does in fact teach these different, it, it teaches these doctrines that we're going to go over. Okay, the next section, we're going to look at the gospel of our salvation. The gospel of our salvation. And we're going to find the gospel there in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. Turn there. First Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay, the Gospel is right there. Now we can see this is, this is the Gospel of our salvation by verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, Excuse me, I've got, to, I've got to read verse 2 to get that. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So the gospel that's in verses 3 and 4 is the gospel by which we're saved. And, and we've got to believe that gospel to be saved by it. So there's the gospel of our salvation, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay, we get a little more information about the gospel. I, I shouldn't say more information. I should say uh, just some details of the gospel we find in Romans 3, 19 through 28. Romans 3:19 through 28 says, "Now we know that what's, what things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even." the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation 
through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the, ver through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So we can see here, we see the blood in verse 25. Christ dying for our sins. His blood is in verse 25. It says, Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Propitiation just means that God is satisfied, that he is appeased. He doesn't require any more sacrifice for sin. Jesus Christ was the, was the payment that satisfied God, and it was complete. And it's through faith in his blood that he becomes propitiation for us. And if we just believe that he died for our sins, was buried and rose again, we believe that, we trust in Jesus Christ, knowing that God will save God will save the believer it's at, at the point that they trust in Jesus Christ, knowing and believing the gospel. God will save a person right at that point. Okay, let's continue on. We'll see, we'll see that, that salvation is received by grace, or excuse me, is received by faith, and it's by the, the grace of God that it's received. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Now, I hope you're writing down these scripture references so you can go to them when you need help to understand salvation by grace. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, the grace of God is a gift to you through faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. So, you'll, re you'll receive salvation by God's grace through your faith. And it's not of yourselves. There's nothing that you can do. God won't accept your works. He'll only accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and that's already been made. It's, only, it's up to you just to trust in Jesus Christ, and God will save you right at that point. And catch the end of verse 9. It says, lest any man should boast. If, it was, if salvation was of works, you'd be, able to, you'd be able to boast about it. You'd be able to say, well, look, I did it. I, I saved myself. Well, it says... It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you can't boast about your salvation because it's, it's not of your works. It's by the grace of God through your faith in Christ. You're just believing in what Christ did and trusting in that alone for your salvation. And, and God saves you by his grace. Second Timothy one nine. Let's look at Second Timothy one nine. Some of these we'll cover a little more quickly. So we only got about uh, twelve minutes left or so. It says, "Who hath saved us?" Now this is speaking about God, of course. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, nodding excuse me, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I just wanted you to see, it says, not according to our works. So 
salvation is not according to our works. Titus 3, 5 through 7. You know, if the, if the Bible only had one verse that said that salvation was not of works, that's all we would need. But there's plenty that say that. Titus 3, 5 through 7 says, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So there in verse 5 again, we've got not by our, excuse me, not by works of righteousness which we have done. So it's, it's not by works of righteousness that, which we have done. If, you're saved to, if you are saved today, it's, it's not by the works of righteousness that you've done. So therefore, you can't do any works to receive salvation because it's not by works of righteousness. It's through faith that you receive salvation. Okay, Galatians 1, 3 through 9. Now this is, this is a little bit off the track, but we need, to, we need to firm up the idea that the gospel of our salvation is the gospel of God's grace, and that's the one that we should be believing today. Okay, Galatians 1, 3 through 9. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said, excuse me, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So we can see there, there's some real strong language that Paul uses to the Galatians about the gospel that he is preaching. And the gospel that Paul is preaching, he, he describes it in Acts 20, 24. He, he gives a name to his gospel in Acts 20, 24. It says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my, I, my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. See, that's what Paul is testifying. He's testifying the gospel of the grace of God. That's what he calls his gospel. It's the gospel of God's grace. That's the gospel of our salvation that he that was in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Okay, now we'll, I've told you a couple times already how to receive salvation. We'll touch on that here. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, again, I want, you to, I want you to understand clearly how to receive salvation. This is very, very important. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if you want to be saved, you need to receive God's grace through your faith. And it's not of works. Otherwise, you could boast about it. So if you'll trust in Jesus Christ, believing that he died for your sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, God will save you right at that point. He'll save you and he'll seal you unto the day of redemption with his Spirit. He'll seal you. And you, you can, at that point, you can rest. You can, you can relax in Jesus Christ, knowing that you're saved and that you don't have anything to worry about. 
Okay, Romans. Well, we'll look at Romans 4. Well, write, write down Romans 4, 1 through 8. We've got to hurry up a little bit here. Because I really want you to understand this right here. So we're going we're gonna to hurry up a little bit in this section. Romans 4, 1 through 8 says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is a reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth the righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Now, since we're, I just wanted you to see there that in verse 5 it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, your faith will be counted to you for righteousness if you will believe God, believe, about, believe him for what he said about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That God will save you. He'll, he'll count your faith. He'll impu or, excuse me. He will count your faith for righteousness. So you will have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ imputed to you when you believe the gospel. And we're going to have to skip a few things here. I want you to understand this. In the next three minutes, I want you to understand the, un, the forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1.7. I wish I had a little more time, but we'll do the best we can here. Ephesians 1.7. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Jesus Christ, you have redemption, and it's through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. See, in Christ you have the forgiveness of sins. It's not something that you need to keep getting. That's, that's something that I thought a long time ago, and I found that in the scriptures it teaches that when you trust in Christ that you're forgiven completely at that point. And you don't have any more need of being continuously forgiven. You're completely forgiven. And Colossians 1.14 says basically the same thing here. And I want you to see that you, you have forgiveness. Ephesians 4.32 If you will trust in Christ, at the point that you trust in Him, God imputes the righteousness of Christ to you and you have complete forgiveness of your sins through his blood. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That word hath is very important there. It's not, it doesn't say that you have to keep getting forgiveness. That's what a lot of people teach, that you've got to continuously ask God for forgiveness as you go through your life. I don't have to do that. Now that's a hard thing to understand because that's what a lot of us have been taught when, since we were very young that you need to go every night or every week or something and ask God to forgive you for your sins. But this verse says hath. That means it's, it's already been done. It's passed. My forgiveness has already been accomplished and God did it. God forgave me 100% when I trusted in His Son. So I don't need to get forgiveness anymore. I have it. I can rest in Jesus Christ. I've only got two more minutes to go, so we'll just have to wrap it up here. And the Bible talks about being baptized into Christ. And I, I want you to, 
if you have a chance, look up Matthew 3.11 and you'll see that there is more than one type of baptism in the Bible. And on this program, we've seen there's been programs about baptism. And the baptism that saves you is not water. It's a baptism that God's Holy Spirit does when you believe. When you believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit of God baptizes you into Christ. Not, not a water baptism. It's a, it's a baptism that is accomplished by God's Spirit. And you find it in this verse here, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And we'll, you can see that there is more than one baptism in Matthew 3.11. And this verse, these verses here, Galatians 3, 26 and 27, also talk about being uh, baptized into Jesus Christ. And I just say again that it's not a water baptism. It's a baptism that God's Holy Spirit performs when you trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. And we didn't get to all of our verses, but I hope that you will trust in Jesus Christ and receive the salvation that God has for you. Thank you. We hope this program has been an eye-opener to you. We are not out to destroy anyone's faith, but to establish your faith upon the truth. Only then will you experience real liberty. The truth shall set you free. If we could be of any further assistance to you, we would love to help you. Or if you would like any of the free literature you see on your screen, you may call or write Grace Bible Church, 13630 Common Road, Warren, Michigan, 48093. Our phone number is area code 313-778-5032. Once again, that's Grace Bible Church, 13630 Common Road, Warren, Michigan, 48093. Area code 313-778-5032. This program was presented freely to you in cooperation with this local public cable station. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Join us again this time next week to learn more about God's message of grace. Until then, this is Daniel Schulert speaking for all of us at Grace Bible Church, praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being lightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe.